Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to come together and learn about what you have created for us and help us to use this knowledge for good purposes and to uh, benefit others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to have two topics tonight. Uh, first one is going to be seed starting greenhouses. So uh, a little, some structures that you can use to put your uh, seed starts out in uh, so they can get good light and good heat as they mature to the point where you want to set them out in your garden. And the sec second topic will be uh, actually starting seeds. Uh, in, um, not out in the garden, but you know, in, in containers, pots, uh, so that you can grow them up and get them ready to be set out when the weather's a little bit nicer. So, first topic here. So, reasons why you might want to have a greenhouse for seed, starting seeds here. So, here are some of the reasons that I have. Uh, more room to start more plants. So most of us have limited space in our houses to, uh, for window sills and places or racks or things like that with lights uh, inside the house. So it's nice to be able to uh, expand what you're growing by moving them outside. Uh, gives them much more light and heat than you can uh, usually produce within a, a house setting or something like that. Uh, you get a lot, quite a bit of light. Uh, so the sun gives off on a good sunny day about 100,000 lumens and usually uh, I'm looking on for LED grill lights and you can get them uh, for about 23,000 lumens. Uh, you can, if you go up you can get maybe a little bit more but they get pretty expensive when you get into maybe 32,000 which is much, much higher but definitely don't get as much light as you would uh, out in the bright sun. Uh, also, you'll get more heat. Uh, you, you can easily get the plants up to 80, 85, 90 degrees out in the greenhouse during the day. And where it's, that's difficult in a uh, house setting to have a room, you know, that would be that hot, or if you just have them in your living room or something like that, you wouldn't want to have them that hot. So they're going to be more of a cooler temperature. So they're going to It'll grow a little faster in a, in a warmer temperature. Uh, also keeps them from getting leggy. Uh, that's the term we use when the plants get very tall. Uh, a lot taller than the stem can usually support and they kind of either flop over or they just kind of are kind of squiggly and they don't, aren't, aren't nice and sturdy like they should be. So shorter plants are actually better, sturdier. Um, also they don't have to uh, buy grow lights or pay for electricity. The sun provides it, or um, so that's something that some reasons that I have at least. Probably there are more uh, different sizes. So here's some different sizes. Here's starting out small, something you can set outside. Uh, I think these go on sale. I think you can get them down to twenty dollars on sale, but for right now at Walmart they're about thirty-two. So that would probably be the, the bare minimum there. Um, so you can get. Um, four different uh, places to put trays there, which isn't too bad for you to have a few small things. Um, and once once you outgrow this, you can bring that indoors and use it for a rack or a shelf to set your plants on uh, to germinate before you set them out in the greenhouse if you'd like to do something like that. Like, that's what I use mine for. And then here's a little bit larger. This is my setup right now. Um, so this is uh, about nine foot wide by about four and a half foot high. Uh, allows me to get in there and set quite a few plants out. It's about 20 foot long. Uh, so I started out with a 10, 10 foot long and extended it on to another uh, 10 feet uh, as I was, my needs increased. And here's another kind of medium sized one here. It's a little bit taller. Uh, so this is about a uh, about 20 foot uh, half circle there. So you get about oh about six and a half feet height in the middle there and about a 12 foot wide at the bottom. So this is put together by with a PVC pipe 
and the different fittings that you can use to uh, construct it with, the corner pieces and uh, tees for connecting the, in the middle there. Um, these are you know, little cross pieces you can use. Um, and then there are you know, little corner pieces in there, so you've got pipes along the bottom and on the sides here. And then there's also diagonals here put in there. And so, you, can, you can use those cross ones also for irrigation, in, like with drip irrigation and stuff. You can, yeah. Because you're using pipe, you can fix it with the T's and the elbows, or you can actually pump water through it to irrigate your greenhouse as well. <laughs> okay. Then here's a, a larger greenhouse here. Uh, so this one uh, is well, it's about it's about the same height, but the pipes are quite a bit larger on there. They're about an inch and three eighths inch uh, top rails. That's kind of like the greenhouse industry standard for commercial greenhouses. Um, and then they're uh, bent uh, with, a, with a pipe bender. And you have these boards along the sides here. These are so you can roll up this this modern plastic here. You'll see there's a little gap where you can see daylight out there. And there's a pipe that goes along inside the plastic, and you can roll it up with a little crank on there on one end there, or both ends, depending on how long it is. Um, so you see, this is a standard door height. So another about six and a half feet is what you get out of um, uh, 20 foot. Um, there's radius on there. Um, that's not a radius. Radius is half the diameter. Uh, half the circumference. So you've got to, you've got to decide. So, so if you need it, to, you know, it depends on if you want like a nine foot wide, be, you have to either bend the pipes differently or if you want a perfect, you know, half circle, then you got to decide that your, your height in the middle is going to be half whatever the your diameter is going to be here. So this is this is going to be a radius going up to the ground there. So you know, I'll just give you some ideas. Here's another <coughs> version of it here. And my phone's got a little bit messed up there, so I apologize for that. But so I've got a 20-foot greenhouse. Uh, it's going to cost you in this style in about $339 minimum. And then there's uh, you know extra stuff you can add, but that's kind of the commercial grade with the door and all the wood and everything else uh, connectors on there. So shelving, some ideas for shelving. I'm going to go over those. Uh, so we have different wood structures you can build uh, for shelving. Uh, so this one's got four, four different levels. Depends on how high your greenhouse is, you probably only get by with maybe two or three. Um, this one's a fairly tall greenhouse, so you can go up a little higher like that. But if you have enough space in between, you can still get adequate light because you got light coming in through all around. And there's some other ideas for uh, shelving. So you can go full length and really support it on the ends there. It's fairly short. So you can build some supports in the middle if it's kind of longer than that. And there's some other ideas for top shelving, and this, this particular one is uh, built up with wood on the bottom here. Uh, it's a, a style that some people like, and then you have storage down here uh, for equipment or pots or soil or whatever tools that you want to keep in the greenhouse there. That uh, is nice. Mm -hmm. that is, that, is that yours? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some pictures I have, so you know, this is glass. Uh, when did, or, Panes on all through that, so that's a fairly nice one. They're probably made out of cedar, and so some of the higher end ones. There's like the shelving. There's a very simple shelving. This is using some pellets that were broke, uh, taken apart and the wood used uh, that, uh, to build a little simple structure with some uh, two by sixes and a, as a frame and some simple wood on the bottom there and the shelving there. So, and you don't actually have to have, you know, all like a completely filled in uh, on mine. Here I actually just have some uh, two by twos. I used I started out with some uh, two by fours and two by sixes, whatever I had laying around, just scrap wood. And then I had this stack of two by twos and I'm like, oh these, these would be a lot lighter to carry around when I set it up. And you know, also a little thinner. Um, so they're if 
you know, the, the twisting and warping of wood and, you know, trying to get it level was a challenge. When was this picture taken? Oh, a week ago or so, or sometime this week. So you've already got your starts on the Yeah, rolling. so these are all the onions here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven trays of onions there, and you know, the tomatoes are in here. Uh, all my broccoli and kale, kohlrabi uh, and all that's in there right now. How early can you put that in your pots and put it in the green? Um, well, it depends on what it is. Um, so they all have they have to be cold hardy if you're going to leave them out there overnight. I have my tomatoes out there now, but they don't stay in there overnight because it gets down almost air temperature outside, yeah. Well, I usually use a clicker St. Pat's Day, Dan. I'm from yeah. Wisconsin, St. Pat's Day, you can start your tomatoes and stuff. Peppers, you can start, I, mean, I, I put them all in yesterday, uh, but peppers take two weeks before they germinate, so they take a long time. Yeah. Like he says, mine's in the greenhouse the daytime, I bring them in at night, because yeah. uh, it's just too cold. So whenever it warms uh, up, that's when Pat's, I yeah. like to, to what's called potting up, put them in bigger pots where I'm not going to be moving 75 tomato pots, one gallon ones, into my house at night. They're going to stay out there. So I'm, before I do that, I'm going to make sure that they're, it's warm enough at night or at least you know, not going to be freezing temperatures out there. Yeah, so I've, I've talked to a couple of the uh, um, nurseries over in the Western area, and they, they, they've talked about um, taking um, a double layer of plastic yep. to keep it a little bit warmer and then acclimating the plants into the greenhouse you know but how do you know i guess you would keep your temp check your temperature in the greenhouse yeah at right. night and see when it gets your humidity gauge right there which is yeah. important to kind of keep track of you know especially midday you go out there about one o'clock or something you keep in there and go, oh no it's around 92 degrees yeah. to open up some uh, you know, put some air in there, keep it down. So your magic temperature is about 95 degrees. As soon as you go above that, that's when the plants go out of photosynthesis and they go to photorespiration mode and they're just, you know, trying to, try to pump out the water and so they'll dry out real fast and they're not doing well. That's a stress time for them. So you've got to keep it, you know, below 90 is, you know, 85 is a good, they seem to like that one. I just recently it was on uh, Amazon looking at gardening stuff and they have a, uh, a wax cylinder yes. uh, vent that opens and closes by temperature. Yes, those are those are very nice. I don't have I didn't get around to looking up the price of them. It wasn't that much. Nice. I don't think they're you know, yeah. coming all over something. Yeah, I think it wasn't that big, but you have to kind of rig up some kind of hinged door at the top where it can open and close and then make it yeah, and it stretches out. It's kind of like a piston. Stretches out and opens up your door, and then as it cools, it closes it for you. Yes. So those can be very nice. They are nice. If you're gone, it's up to 90 yeah. degrees, and then it's nice to have something open. Yeah. yeah. And I've been leaving my tomato plants out in the greenhouse the last two weeks. Okay. I figured they probably shivered a lot, but I didn't kill them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, whatever, like whatever works for you. So certain my mind doesn't. By my morning, it's usually air temperature out there. What it is outside, it's, it's cool down. Here. This is in the middle of Albany, so it's yeah. probably warmer than. All right. So plastic covering attachment. Uh, most of the time, you can have some kind of plastic sheeting. I've been using the six mil uh, construction grade clear plastic. That seems to work fairly well. Uh, it does break down a little bit faster than the greenhouse plastic, but the greenhouse plastic is like sometimes more than twice as much. Uh, and you may not be able to get it locally, so that means you have to pay shipping on top of that. <coughs> so that can get pretty expensive. Uh, so that's what I do in order to uh, prevent it from breaking down quite so fast is as soon as all my plants are out, that greenhouse is down. I'll the pl take the plastic off. Now I could just leave the ribs up there sometimes I do that, uh, but the plastic comes off, hold it up, put it in a dark place, uh, away from the light, and then I bring it out in the spring again when I need to set it up again. So 
it, that's how I extend the life, and I've had it for uh, three years now, and the black plastic is just starting on the very top to get a little bit crispy, you know, a little bit breaking down, but most of the other parts of it, you know, the end walls and the sides, they're fine still. You, you find that if you get the plastic good and tight, it lasts longer? It doesn't have as much room in it with the wind? Probably, I don't know. Yeah, because I've, I've so seen a method that. like uh, the, the bow greenhouse you were showing. Yeah, so uh, they put a bow under and a bow over. Uh -huh. So the greenhouse, so you actually have the plastic going under some of the bows to help hold the plastic. I've never seen that. Before. Yeah, it, it, and it helps to, to, to tighten it up. And, and if there's no movement in the wind, yeah. the plastic tends to, to last longer, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right, so any other things that you can add to this? Yeah, they make it like a little chair over here. Okay. So attaching to pipes, so these come in different sizes depending on what you, what size of pipe you decide to, to run. I do half inch EMT conduit, which is the power conduit. Um, so I use these clips here. These work really well. They have a little bit of a metal, metal spring in them as well to keep them from releasing. So once they snap on, they're on there fairly tight, so you have to kind of peel them off. Uh, with great difficulty, but they do come off. You know, they don't tend to tear the plastic. Uh, the other type of attachment that I like to use is these little uh, coat an uh, anvil spring clips. And these are one inch ones that I got at Home Depot. And they're, they're both about the same price. These are, these are a dollar piece and these are a dollar piece, so you can decide if, uh, which one you want. Those are a little easier on the plastic than these. Uh, the rubber on these does break down after a few years. I've noticed that. They do start to rust. So they're not, you know, <laughs> they do break down after a while. Uh, they all look pretty at first. You think they're going, oh, they're metal and they'll last forever. But they're, the galvanizing is very poor on there. But the chrome plate is on there. Um, but they're very handy for. Uh, I have a door on mine that's just a sheet of plastic and then I, I clamp it to the end uh, hoop there. And that allows me to just open it up, go inside, and when I'm done, I can just take a few clamps and clamp it closed again. So it's handy for that or places. And also on the top, I use it to unclamp and then open up the top of the plastic so there's a little bit of a uh, I'll let air through to, to when, it, when it gets too hot in there, I can open it up by unslamming. So that's something to, to think about where you put these. Uh, another way to attach plastic, uh, commercially they use what's called wiggle wire in, in little channels. Mm -hmm. um, so these are kind of you know halfway up so that you can undo them if you want and also hold it, hold it tight without putting nails and screws and things like that on boards. Usually you can also put a board over the plastic and then tap it down. Uh, but that can also tear, you know, it does, you know moving up and down. There's, you'd have to wrap it again in order to prevent that from happening and put another layer of wood on there. But, so these are very nice for taking on and off uh, and also just holding it securely without ripping the plastic there. That's another view of it. So there's just a little wire piece that goes in the canal there. And then pipe bending. So this is more of a commercial grade, but it's still uh, just as economical if you're doing larger pipe as some of the other pipe benders out there that I've seen. Uh, so this is basically a pre bent pipe with a brace in the middle and then a little attachment, a little uh, larger pipe on the end that you can put your stripper pipe through. And this is, this is it in action. You put it kind of on a horizontal table that you can uh, screw it down to, back to the outside or something like that. And then basically run, run your pipe through there, um, the little band at one end, and then you just pull it. Pull it until it, it touches the, uh, this part here, until it matches the angle, and then you shove it on, and then you keep pulling, it, pulling on it until you get that you know, arc that you want for a particular bend. Uh, so these come in all the different sizes, you know, different bins that you may want. So if you decide you're, you want a wider greenhouse or a bigger bin, then you've got to go make a new one. 
because they don't, uh, you know, they're only good for one, one stock or type of bin. Uh, and they run about $50 or so for one of those. Uh, so this is another style here. This is an EMT conduit bender. And if you go any larger than half inch, like three quarters inch, then they start to get in the $50 range too. So there's, <laughs> but something like this is about, I think I got mine for 20 or something like that. Uh, 20 to $30 range, which is reasonable. It's not terrible. Um, but this one works for half inch EMT conduit. So it used to be very, very useful if you're trying to stick with lower cost piping and keep that line. So rather than saying, oh, let's go with three quarter inch, that would be stronger. Well, then you have to think about, okay, well, it's going to increase the cost of the bender if you're going to need to bend with it. Uh, so then adding a door, uh, as far as a wooden door on the structure there. So this is something I don't have personal experience with, but I've done a little bit of research here to give some recommendations and some ideas here. Uh, so this is Bootstrap Farmers' I, uh, method of attaching theirs on their greenhouses you can purchase. Uh, so they have a, a two by four that they run up here and then they cut a little notch on this side you kind of see a little bit of a notch there where they run it up against the pipe and then they put a carriage bolt through the pipe. They drill a hole through the pipe there and then run a bolt. Um, and this goes straight down and then there's just a um, screwed on a little header, header to there. And there's another view of it there on the front there. Uh, so this is a little bit of a, just a simple structure the door. They put, uh, I think it's one by fours, uh, sandwiched uh, in a welded wire in between there to give it support and structure, keep it from flexing and drooping on one end or something like that, distorting. Um, and then just some simple hinges on there, top and bottom, and then another piece in the middle to latch up here. Um, just a simple idea there. And then here's another idea. Um, for attaching it here. So these use, and that's kind of a bad view there. I was going to have to see there, let's see if I see another one here. Maybe uh, not. Uh, anyway, so it's just basically a strap that goes over the top and then it comes down on either side of the board. And that, with the, you know, screwed into that allows it to hold, hold it on that pipe on either side there. It's like a plumber strap. Yeah, something like that. They got, this, this was a commercially produced one, so they had some little nicer straps, but just a band, basically a band in the middle that was bent. And so this is what it looks like on the bottom here. So if you, there's two different types, and uh, kind of the style that I use is kind of like the introductory, you know, real simple, very low cost. Um, and it isn't what you call freestanding, it's more of a tent style. So that means uh, use ropes uh, to attack, uh, as a, it's called a, a ridge, ridge post. Um, I was going to take some pictures of that, but I didn't manage to get them in here. But um, anyway, it's just basically a process where you take a, take a rope and you put a little clove hitch uh, knot uh, on the first one, and then you stretch it over the rope to the next one, you tie another uh, <coughs> one, and you keep going down to the end. And then, so you're basically having a, uh, a rope along the ridge that goes down to a post on either end. You pull it tight, and that keeps all of them in line, and none of the, none of the uh, ribs can move and flex like that. So. Uh, that, that's a very easy way to do it, um, but it also, you get, you know, got ropes in the way and, you know, uh, I guess disadvantage, I guess, would be that then you have a rope that you have to manipulate around, you know, your plastic on the end, that it's not a terrible big deal, but well, there's normal style for more, you know, larger greenhouses that have more freestanding and anchor down to the ground. So you need a little bit more supports. Alright, so rich, rich posts, a lot of them have a solid pipe. Um, a little ridge pipe on there to hold, it, hold all the ribs together. Um, and then there's different different types of attachments up here. 
Uh, this I thought was a fairly good idea, but I, as I was on my way, I was thinking, oh, I can make that even simpler. I would have to have two of them, because there's a strap that goes around the pipe, and then there's, there's that, another one that goes around the other pipe. So why do you just have two? All you have to do is just have a, have a loop and then screw that into the pipe, and then that holds the ridge piece. So we'll do that a little bit here, but some ideas there. So that was their idea as far as attaching to the uh, little hoop there, and then this is the straight piece along the top there, the attachment there. And then if you're going to have it freestanding, you need some supports, the diagonal supports. So it needs to be attached near, fairly near the bottom, about a foot off the ground here, and up to the next one. That's on the ends. You need about four of them on either side, and then on either end there. And so here's another view of putting in the um, the frames for the door there. So you can see there's just a little strap that goes over the top with a bolt going through there or a screw of some type. And then putting in the door there. So there's another very simple door frame of uh, just about five pieces of wood there. And here's another door <coughs> example here. You get an idea. So this is a, a wooden structured one. So Why did it make it so short? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So you can make your kids. Well, that particular one. I mean, when you're doing, doing hoops, there's a reason for you know having limited height because the problem with bending it that way, or the length of your pipes come in ten, ten foot lengths, so it's a little more difficult. But wooden structure, you can make it as tight as tight as you want. There's a rather short length. So in thinking about how to, how to get away from too many bins and keeping it low cost, so you know, you don't have to have them around. It does have a little bit more structure, uh, structural stability to have a nice hoop. But if you can avoid that, you can save yourself a little bit of cost there and effort. The hoops I bent was with this type of pipe uh, conduit bender, and it was rather a challenge. Uh, it is handy because you can do it at any angle you want, but you've got to keep working it all the way around and then, okay, squish and redo and unbend and it is quite, quite a chore. So to keep it a little more simple, I came up with this design. So this uses two 10-foot uh, EMT conduit pieces, these guys here. So by bending it once, at about a 65 degree angle here, goes up five feet, turns, turns the corner there, and goes up to a, a connector piece. So you got all the calculations right, because you can get um, three quarter inch conduit in 90 degree and 45 degree bends, in short chunks, um, within like, like a 270 or something like that piece, so fairly economical. Um, this is a little bit shorter piece that I have to have laying around and cut it to the, to the right angle to get a 45 degree bend in here. And this can be used up as the connecting top piece here. And all you need is a couple, a couple of screws up there, uh, four different screws, to two on the bottom and two on the side to keep it from twisting and rotating. And it actually holds up very nicely. Um, so it's fairly quick and easy. I was able to get it done. Real quick, just to get the bend as soon as I figured out, get the angles right and how to um, judge what the, you know, get the angle just right. It went together very nicely. So that's a two piece frame. Right? Yep, two piece. Most, yeah. So this, this gives me, in theory, I think it's like seven and a half. Diagram here. Seven feet, three inches at the peak there. So that's not too bad. There's plenty of room to put in a door a little bit lower. And your door doesn't have to be your normal standing up height. Uh, it can be a little lower because you can duck underneath and then you can stand up inside. So if you need to, need to move the door down a little bit, you know, if you needed a you know, six foot door or something like that, or even you know, five foot, eight inches or something like that, it's not, not terrible. Uh, so, be, so this this uses the concept of having two ropes on either corner here. 
because rather than having one down the center, uh, up I have two, and that opens up the front here so you can open the door. And if you have a rope down the center, then having a door in there doesn't work. So that's one of the advantages of having two, two ropes. So we just go down to four stakes here. This is just a you know a one one off setup here, just to give you an idea. So this is kind of the structure, all the math that I did to try to get it all to work well. Um, so there's a five feet there, another five feet there, and the connection piece. Uh, so, the, so the key to make, making this easy, rather than trying to get, you know, there's a, you can actually see kind of the angle on the pipe vendor here. It'll kind of give you a rough estimate, but it's not super accurate. It's kind of hard to tell. It says 60 degrees, and then there's no real marks to tell you where 65 is. You're going to have to guess. But there's this measurement here, which is an exact measurement. 8 feet, 6.6 .6 inches. And if you measure that with a tape measure, you can, make, you can measure that after you get it approximately where you think it should be. And you can see, okay, I'm a couple inches off. You know, should press on a little bit and get a little bit uh, shorter. Or if you're, you need to bend it back a, type, a little bit, if you're a little bit too close on that, that measurement, that really helps. Um, so then, uh, as far as space, here, I was kind of calculated out, so this is, a, this is nine feet wide. <clears throat> uh, so that gives you enough room for two, so these, these little black things would represent uh, shelving or uh, basically trays. So most of your trays come in standard measurements here. Which is this one here, nursery grade. Uh, so these are uh, 10 inches wide by about 20 inches long, 21 sort of. Uh, hard to fit all the stuff in there. They're usually about 21 inches. But if you give a little bit extra leeway on either end, you can fit them in there nicely and have 20 inches for a walkway and another 44 inches for your seat trays in there. So, you know, that, that gives you quite a bit of capacity. You can always go longer if you need to. Uh, so this is the, what it would look like with ropes on there. This is actually, whoops, on the there we go. Just, you know, make a little rotation off on each one there. You go along and tie it off with a the, the stake there. So you don't have to get too fancy on stakes. I have firewood laying around. This is my firewood stake. They're very easy to make. I use these in my garden for all my ends of the garden. So it's just basically a firewood piece and I just Get it, you know, split it basically on the, to the right dimensions, and I, I can make about five or six of these off of that good fire with piece. And you know, when they rot away after the year, they're very easy to make more. Uh, and I just put some notches around the top there so I can tie a rope on it and not have it slip off. And then just put these at about a 45 degree angle, pointed away there, and let those hold in pretty good. Just count these in with a good sledgehammer. And, Pretty much a no cost solution, or you can get some you know, tent stakes if you want something like that. You know, if you don't have access to that or difficult, that you know, tent stake or something like that would work perfectly well. And if you want it freestanding, get a little more fancier. Uh, this would be the, the construction of it here. You see, there's the ridge, ridge pole for it, and you get the header and the side for the door there. And then it's good to keep these. Um, lots of different ways that you can, you know, attach the, in, the, the base of it in the ground. Uh, you can either put a pipe in the ground and then, you know, set that inside. You can put a rebar, uh, a little piece of rebar sticking out, and then you can slip them over the rebar. Um, one, you know, most, most of the time we don't have terribly high winds around here. I've never. I don't, I don't, all I do is push mine in about an inch in the ground, shove that pipe in a little bit just so it doesn't move back and forth, and I never had it lift off the ground or anything that actually the rope on the, on the top holds it all down quite nicely, so. Um, anyway, if you put a bunch of wood, you can put some wood on there. You want, uh, either two by fours or one by fours or whatever you want. Uh, this matters as long as it's, you know, high enough, and then you can put some bands, metal bands on there to attach it each one, keep them from shifting back and forth, and keep them in place. 
And then there's some angle pieces if you want in there on the ends, as was mentioned there, some angle to uh, tilt the band on the sides there.